Platforms are on everybody's minds. Everybody wants to do platforms or at least are interested in doing platforms. And to talk about platforms with us today, we have Abby Bankser. Hey, Abby, thanks for joining. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks so much for being here. So I said that platforms are on everybody's mind and we will talk about platforms and platform maturity today. But before we start doing that, I'd like to know a little bit about your journey, so to speak, what got you here, how you got into the platform area, so to speak. Yeah, I um, have been involved in internal tooling around software delivery for my entire career in software engineering. So I started as a QA, helping teams identify how to move faster, yet also safer into production and, and meet customer needs for our, for our applications. From there, I moved into sort of DevOps and platform engineering and SRE work, which all had variations on the underlying goals of deliver software that is high quality, high value, and do so as efficiently as possible. Uh, and so I think I've just sort of been in this space for, for my entire career, which is exciting. Yeah, and, and I think you're ticking all the boxes here with, you know, like what is DevOps, SRE platform, QA. So, yeah, and, and I think it's interesting because it really, in my mind, right, the, the arc that you're taking really represents where the industry is going. Platforms have become a really hot topic, I would say, last year was really a big change in the importance of platforms. So, so before we start diving a little bit deeper into platform maturity, which is our main topic today, I'd like to briefly talk about why platforms or the platform topic is seeing such a surge. What would you say is the main driver behind that? Yeah, I think that the main driver comes from the concepts of shifting uh, complexity and shifting responsibility around the organization. Um, uh, Richard Sirota from, I think, Google had put out a blog about shifting down instead of shifting left. And that idea of saying that we want to shift left, that became quite popular maybe five to eight years ago because we wanted to get faster feedback. And this was a large part of you build it, you run it, you wanted to understand the complexities of security challenges early and all these things. The faster feedback doesn't have to come with unbounded complexity increase for for the software delivery teams. And so what he's advocating in this blog is to, to shift down, to, to build on top of things that incorporate all that complexity, but still give you that feedback quite quickly. And so I think platform engineering is the natural progression of sort of scaling those DevOps practices, maintaining fast feedback loops, maintaining you build it, you run it, um, maintaining that culture of DevOps without having to have database experts and security experts in every single team, which is not sustainable for organizations of scale. And so they try and build that in at, as an economy of scale for their organization and enable everybody with, with that. I, I've heard you saying that in other presentations that platform engineering is to a large part about scaling. And I really, that's one way I explain it as well, because I think that that is a lot of the the essence of it. So it's all about scaling. And I think that makes a lot of sense, right? With more and more organizations just doing more and more IT stuff, the question of how to scale that stuff, I think just becomes more and more relevant and more and more also economically important to, to make good decisions around that. And um, so let's talk a little bit about the platform uh, maturity model or how that evolved within. Maybe you can give us just a very brief um, history of how that evolved in the CNCF, where this model has been created and your, how you, you have been involved in the CNCF and helped creating that model. Absolutely. So the CNCF is a large foundation. It's most famous for Kubernetes, but now has hundreds of, of uh, applications under its umbrella. And in order to be a steward of these applications and of the cloud native ecosystem and, and landscape, they obviously need to be quite aware of what's going on in patterns and organizations, the needs of their end users and things like that. And they do this through a hierarchy starting from the CTO, it, just like you would in an organization with an office of the CTO style setup. And so there's this whole kind of set of, of people who can report up and make sure that trends are being heard from at the CNCF level. And so that changes the tracks at KubeCon, it changes the, the focus of support for the applications under the umbrella and so much more. Uh, and so underneath that is a group called the uh, TAG or the Technical Advisory Group, which is a uh, group that focuses on a challenge, um, an area of challenge. So examples being security or observability. 
The one that I'm a part of is the app delivery. So what happens when you've written some software on your laptop, but it needs to get out to users in production. Within each tag, they have the opportunity to spin up uh, maybe more ephemeral or, or less permanent working groups that are more narrow, even more narrow in focus. And there's a working group within that tag called the uh, Platforms Working Group. And I've been a part of that now for about a year and a half. Uh, there's three leads there and a group of probably 30 or 40 really active people and another 30 or 40 who sort of come in and, and join when they can. So we have a lot of people who are um, around the industry working on what does it look like to have platforms support app delivery. Okay, yeah. And and um, I did see, so CNC, if you're, you're working group, you published a platform white paper last spring and then you published the maturity model last fall. And the maturity model, what would you say is the main purpose of the maturity model? So, you know, in terms of people watching this, what is in it for them? Because I think that's always like we could we could read a lot of interesting things, but yeah, what's in it for me, right? If I if I read that platform maturity model paper, which is by the way not very long, so you know, don't be worried. <laughs> Go read. Uh, <laughs> Go read. Yeah, I think I think that the the thing that's in it for them is it's attempting to bust the hype cycle a bit. Uh, it's trying to connect the uh, concepts, the very lofty ideals behind platforms and platform engineering with what it looks like on the ground. What is the benefit to you as an engineer? What is the benefit to software engineers versus platform engineers and to the organization? And so it brings uh, some kind of grounding to all of the, the conversations to date. And I think, you know, one of the things I like to say is like, you cannot not build a platform saying that you know, everybody has some kind of platform. Maybe they don't call it that, but they, are, they have practices and tools that they are using. And I think what I really liked about your platform model, and, and then we can maybe dive a little bit deeper into how it works, mm -hmm. is that you have these provisional stages, right? Where you could say, well, if I'm not very sophisticated in doing things, I'm still doing things. So I am in that model, right? You cannot not be in that model. And that that's the part that I really like. It's not something that you have to choose. The only thing you have to choose is to start using it and trying to use it as a way of navigating your path. So maybe you could tell us a little bit what the model looks like so that it becomes a little bit clearer what I was just trying to say, but probably didn't say very well. No, it's, it's fantastic. You're exactly right. A platform is about raising you up off the ground, but if there's nothing raising you, you're just on the ground and that is still your platform. Uh, the, the platform is the earth or the ground you're on, right? Um, but realistically, very few people are actually on the ground. Most people have something that they build with and that's what we're trying to, to show here. So the model has um, five aspects or rows, uh, which describe the sort of benefits to an organization or the outcomes you might see. And those are around um, how you uh, invest in your platform, how you build the team and the resources around your platform, the adoption. So how do you uh, drive use of that platform and, and how do users get benefit from it? Uh, interfaces, how do they get access to that platform? APIs, UIs, et cetera, uh, and operations. So talking from day negative whatever that you need to be thinking about day two. So what does it look like to build, deploy, and operate this these different services internal to your organization? And then measuring, because if you don't measure, you can't get feedback and you can't improve. So those are our, our five aspects of which you can independently be at different maturities for each of those. Um, and you can be at different maturities even on different platforms in your organization. So you might have more than one platform and you might be very mature on measurement on one and, and less mature on another and that's okay. This is really just a, to get a visibility, to, as you said, visibility into into where you are. So. And, I, and I think, you know, that's the part, I really like that part as well because I think in, in larger organizations, right, you will find that if you look into different business units, like you said, right, they will have different maturity stages in different business units because maybe in that business unit, they decided to invest into something that they thought they needed and they didn't do that in another business unit. So it also can become, I think, this kind of interesting way of understanding where different parts of your business are and also maybe analyzing that. So so can you tell us a little bit more? So you talk about the provisional, like what are the different um, levels that you can be at in, in all of these five aspects? 
Yeah, so once you kind of are understand the aspects, it's where are you on the scale? And uh, as a recovering consultant myself, I'm aware that maturity models uh, can be used for evil, but I've also seen them used for good. And we spent a lot of energy trying to make this a maturity model for the people, for the, the people in building platform engineer uh, platforms in their organizations, and they could get benefit from it. And we're getting feedback that that's landing, which is awesome. The reason why we did the reason why we think we did that is we built these four levels not as a mountain to climb that everyone needs to get to level four, but instead that these are descriptive of you as a team and you as an organization of what maturity you're at and therefore that your platform should match you for. So we the four levels are provisional, operational, scaled, uh, scalable, and optimizing. And if you think about an organization, if you are an early stage startup, if you're up on scalable and optimizing, you're, you may not be around long enough to, to enjoy that platform, right? Because you're having these, these runway concerns. But in contrast, if you're an organization that is product market fit, you hit your hockey stick, stick and you're in the scaling mode, you are probably running around putting out fires every day unless you're at least at operational, right? Because if you're not able to, maintain that that application and that product for your users as you start growing users that will be quite difficult let alone hitting scalable so that now it's also um, you know easy to, to to manage that increase in in users but even you know I would argue even if you if you're not running around putting out fires every day like you said right which at, at least then you would you would have some motivation to do something. But you might still, I mean, everything might work well. It just, you might just build things in a much more expensive way than you had to, right? Mm -hmm. and, and even that may be something that you don't realize until you look at this and it's like, wait a minute, <laughs> maybe here is something where we are at this level and given our size, we actually should scale up a little bit. So, so how would you say people should be using that maturity model? Because I think, like you said, that it, it is something that you you put a big focus on to make it useful for the people. I like that. <laughs> so how should the people go about using it and get something out of it? Yeah, I think that it's about um, thinking, it, it's about challenging you to think about your context and think about how your current platform offering does or does not meet the needs of your business and of your software engineering teams and of, at the end of the day, your company's customers, right? Uh, and we try and help you with that in the paper. Um, so everyone sees the table and that's the that's the thing people take pictures of at the conferences and things. But actually the paper behind it can contain some working examples of how you might feel if you're at that level, the things you might see around you and the, the experiences you may have, which may trigger a, yeah, that is me. I am struggling to keep up with X or I am getting this benefit or whatever. And that, then you can go read those examples for the next level up and go, that is what I want, if that is what you want. And if it is, then you understand that, that that's your, your delta and that now the work is, is the hard part. The work needs to be done to get you between those two levels. Yeah, and that's the part I like really, I think I like best about that model, right? That it really kind of connects to the reality of people and not so much just like this abstract model, but really like, here's what it looks for you. and. What do you want to look at? Like, and then you can start thinking about, well, how much would it cost to do that? Right? Exactly. <laughs> do I do I want to make this investment or not? But that's that's another thing. Okay. So Abby, thank you so much um, for taking the time. I think it's really really interesting. Of course, we'll link all the resources from the video. Are there any closing words for the people that you would have? Uh, I think the big thing is is. It's always a call to action to get involved in the working group. It has been an amazing. Um, a channel of conversation. We have people who are in large organizations and small vendors and consultants, as well as end users, all discussing what they're seeing right now. And we have some really amazing work going on around platform as a product, at, but not just us theorizing, but doing uh, research and interviews around organizations around the world. So if any of that is interesting to you, come get involved in the CNCF Slack. Uh, we'd love to have you in the conversation. So. At the very least, go and read the paper. It really isn't that. How many, how many pages, Abby? To be fair, I think it's about 10. But there's a lot of bullet yeah. points and white yeah, space. So. And it's okay. <laughs> it's, well, 10 pages really should be, I think, manageable for most. But yeah, okay. So go and read that paper. And if you want to do more, go and get engaged with the CNCF. I think it's a, it's a great thing. And I think it's only going to become more important, actually, over the next couple of years.
things. So thanks again, Abby, for being here. Thank you. And uh, thanks everybody for watching. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. And with that, we're done for today. And until next time, keep getting APIs to work. Bye everybody.